Hi guys, it's Silverette again, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play. And this is actually kind of a special episode, since everything is new in this episode. I'm using, I'm currently using Audacity on my new PC to record my voice right now. It is recorded on my Let's Play Park on my new PC, finally, after getting this thing to actually work. And I'm also going to edit it on my new PC, so everything is new. What isn't new, however, is my Let's Play Park. This is, sa this is still the same good old park that I was always working on. And honestly, I didn't really feel like working on this park as of lately. I know that I haven't really uploaded too many episodes of this, and that's mainly because I just didn't feel like it anymore. I just didn't like building this park anymore, so I just kind of had to record it sometimes, and it was more like a chore than I really wanted to do it. Though the, the face cam episode was actually a bit better than expected. But the last couple of days, I've actually been addicted to working on this park. I, I, I haven't really worked in this park as much as I have in the past couple of days in weeks. I've just been no-lifing these things, just put, turning on my PC and recording, just because I couldn't record this entire week, and I just wanted to work in this park. So expect loads of Let's Play videos in over the Silver City videos and the tutorial videos uh, in the near future, so that's going to be cool. Now, what I'm working on right now is just a small castle in the middle of the lake. I always wanted to build something over here, but I always had problems with the lag and stuff like that. It was really hard to actually build it, and I never really had a good idea of what I wanted to build. But now I just went for it, and basically what I'm just going to go for is a castle that is kind of in the style of the orange castles uh, near the entrance. Except it's going gonna, it's gonna to have purple roofs, and it's going to be a little bit more alpine-ish than those buildings. So that's going to be the main difference when it comes to that. And really it's just going to be a simple building with some simple foliage around it. I don't really think it's too much special. However, the something that is special about this is I recently got Station Gyms. Uh, what is it called again? I, I, I knew it. Ghost Cabin 5, which is a relatively new set. And it's got awesome pieces. And one of those pieces is a chimney piece. And I really like that piece. I just tried messing around with it and decided that it could actually be used for corner pieces. And of course, that's not what it's meant for, but it's a, it's that really nice kind of medieval spooky looking corner piece that I never had that I suddenly found in a set that just came out. So that's why I'm actually going to kind of overuse that in the near future. But yeah, this is just a simple castle that you're kind of used to at this point. It shares many similarities with actually pretty much everything except for that little cornerstone and the general shape and the fact that I'm using Alpine Village for purple roofs. But really, it's the same kind of glow and uh, well structure in a sense. Just the uh, walls from Station Gyms. Um, I don't know what's that set called again. Station Gyms Castle Things Two, and using the windows from Zero G's Things because that set is awesome, and all of the extra details from Castle Things and also the towers from Medieval by Ralphie, and it's actually a combination that turned out to work really well. Like, I, I still have my doubts about this, and I remember when I just started working on this park that I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a park, and the, the, the theme is gonna be, well, medieval steampunk alpine. And it's, it's really a weird idea, and I don't know why I came up with that in the first place, but it actually works out in a sense, and the more that I'm building and... Also, I'm going to add foliage in this in this episode, and it actually turns out that foliage really helps this park. Like, it usually always helps park uh, helps parks look better with foliage, but especially with this park, since there's so many empty grasslands everywhere, and there are hills and castles and everything, it just works well with the foliage, so that, that just went surprisingly well. Like, if I, if I still had my doubts about this park and whether I actually wanted to continue it, because I was actually at some point thinking about dropping this park altogether, then adding foliage to it kind of eliminated all of those thoughts because it just turned out that foliage just finished the job and it just made it look significantly better. So that's, that's really cool. And now the general shape of this castle is kind of, well, almost finished. Yeah. It's not too complicated of a building, just towers and walls. I don't know if I can still say that. I know that I've been saying this for quite a while, but when you're building medieval, medieval things, all you really need to do to make a building look good, aside from, of course, good shape and good detail, is just add a, a shit ton of towers, really. That's, that's not all there is to it, but 
It's actually a trick that sounds stupid and over the top, but it works. And over the top is also kind of what I'm going for with this park, because honestly, you're not going to have any real life theme parks building enormous castles like that. Even Disney probably doesn't have the money to do that. And also, um, the free fly coaster has a ridiculous amount of scenery in terms of rock work and all those alpine houses. You can't just build that as a real park. So, if you are going for a realistic roller coaster or a realistic park in general, then I would suggest not doing what I'm doing right now. But it's still something that I have fun with doing, especially at this point. Oh, and now you can see, by the way, that the graphics might look a little bit different, and that's because ambient occlusion, better shaders and all that, but it only works when I have the grid on, which is actually a good thing. Like, it took me a while to actually realize this, because at first I was like, hey, where's my ambient occlusion? W what are you doing? Give me back my good graphics. But then it turns out that when I turn the grid on, ambient occlusion is gone as well, and that's actually a good thing, because kind of... Well, for one, it kind of makes it easier to concentrate, but that's really not the main thing. It's just cool to have an option to turn ambient occlusion on, uh, off when you want it, because it does save some performance, and when you're doing foliage and stuff like that, you can always turn the grid off, so you can always see the way that it looks with ambient occlusion on. And when recording a video of a coaster, of course, I'm not going to leave the grid on, so it doesn't really matter in that case. But yeah, working on the foliage and the rock work, which is very important. Uh, as you might see, I'm using Weber's Large Rocks and hallelujah, it works again. Like, I, I tried opening this park for loads of times. I, I don't even, I can't even count how many times, but it's probably nearly 30, though I don't really mind that much because with my new computer, it doesn't take as long as on my laptop to start up, but it's still, it's still annoying, but um, it turns out that Weber's Large Rocks is working now. The only custom scenery problem that I need, still need to fix is something that you might have noticed when I was scrolling through the custom scenery but then again it's it's a time lapse so it's hard to notice it but some sets I don't just have some sets twice in my list but three times so I've like three different clones of one set uh, in my custom scenery list and that's not just one set I think it's uh, all of CTR sins uh, part um, sets yeah and also some of Brian just sets and I really need to figure out which sets I've used and which sets I haven't and where all the clones are within style themed. But other than that, after a couple of days of working and not being able to make videos, I finally got everything to work and I was able to make videos um, yesterday and today. And now I'm sitting here uh, doing my, well, my thingy again. So that's really cool. And yeah, rock work is just the same as everything else. But foliage is where it gets more interesting because I decided to, as over the top as the buildings are and possibly also a bit unrealistic, a bit unrealistic, it's very unrealistic honestly, I decided to just uh, fuck logic and do foliage in a ridiculous way. Just, I think I've used about uh, maybe eight or seven, nine sets like that, something like that, and all kinds of trees and just mixing so many things that it barely makes any sense, but it looks really cool, so might as well. I don't think if I can actually name all of the sets, but I might be able to. Uh, okay, let's give this a shot. Let's give this a shot. So basically, what you're seeing now is Asian Sensation. By the way, I hate the name of the set of that set. Like it's called Asian Sensation, and it just doesn't rhyme. It just doesn't rhyme. Like my OCD doesn't like that. But that's besides the point. So if you use that set, then there's also Station Gym's Gardening 2, obviously Station Gym's Gardening 1, and Station Gym's Gardening 2.5. So that's already four sets. Then there is N7's Fleurs, which I've used for the flowers. I think I've used that early in earlier videos as well, yeah. As well as um, N7's Ornamental Shrubs, so that means seven. And, orn and N7's Ornamental Trees are also important, so that means eight sets. And then we've still got Old Spices Trees for all the oaks and the pines that I was placing just a minute ago and of course those awesome birches they're really cool too so that's nine sets and oh I think that's it though you can also count Weber's foliage but I'm not really sure because I only used that for small shrubs so I think it'll be nine sets well that's still ridiculous though 
Uh, I mean, normally foliage, to be realistic, shouldn't be as diverse. It's, it's always good to add diverse foliage, but if you want to stay to the point and realistic, then it's probably not the best idea. But I just wanted to go over the top with this, just like the buildings, and if you want foliage that looks nice but isn't necessarily realistic, then you might always go with loads of different trees. It's really cool. So I decided to do that. And as you can see, it does take some time to fill it all in because every single tree that you place has to be placed correctly and you have to kind of mess around with it. And that's why it takes a little bit, well, more time, but it's still cool. And as you can see, I'm using the checkerboard terrain pattern. But anyway, that's it for this episode. So thank you for watching and bye.